be one. We want to thank God because we enjoyed the previous chapter where everyone was engaging. And yeah, it can only get sweeter. The book Desire of Ages is about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. Welcome everyone to this morning study. Yes, chapter 21, Bethesda and the Sanhedrin. And before we uh, start, may I ask us if we can sing song number 625, Higher Ground. And if there is someone who can kindly uh, help me put the, 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 the reading on the screen, I would appreciate it, please. Okay. Higher Ground 625, it's got four stanzas. So we'd like to take the first one, please. Anyone? We'll do the first oh, one, I'll share the screen. Thank you, Arlene and Linda. And the second one? I can do the second one. Thank you, Sister Rhoda. And the third one? I can do the third. What number is it again? Six four five. Higher ground on SDA hymnal. Six four five. Okay. Six two five. Six two five. Thank you. Yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Okay. And the fourth stanza, please. Okay. Uh, I can do the fourth one. Uh, shall we start? I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and I shall stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane. That I have found, nor plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay, where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where those are born, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up. And let me stand by faith on heaven's table and a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to leap above the world. Though Satan's does it me I held. For faith is called the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lead me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. Ere I have plain that I have found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I pray till heaven I found, Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up, thus shall stand by faith on heaven. Then stable land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for enabling us to come together to study your word. A wonderful chapter indeed, which shows us of your kindness and compassion towards those who are needy, those who are broken heart, those who are sick. And we just pray that you open our hearts 
to hear your word and that we will learn more and more about Jesus. May everything that we are going to read and say be guided by you, the power of your Holy Spirit. Because of ourselves, we have nothing good to say. For we are a people of unclean lips. Cleanse us, dear Lord, we pray thee. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, welcome again, everyone, to this morning's study. And the topic is taken from the book of John, chapter 5. And I think it's good to read. It's not a very long chapter. If someone can help me uh, read, uh, I would appreciate it. So it's John, chapter 5, and it is, the invalid at Bethesda. The invalid, the invalid at Bethesda. John chapter five. Uh, Sister Judith, can you help me read? I'll stop at verse eight, and you can, sorry, verse seven, and you can read eight and the rest of the verses. Are you okay to do that for us, yeah. please? Okay. Yes. Okay. He says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind hold, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whatsoever, whosoever then, first after the troubling of the water stepped in, was made whole in whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time, in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Verse 7, the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another stepped down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. On the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he say, And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more lest a worse thing come unto, unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore, should I query one? And no, there, no, 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 that's fine. Okay, we'll, just stop. we'll just stop at verse 15. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Judith, for reading that for us. Okay, and then we will go to the main study. Welcome again, those who have just joined us. And it is chapter 21, Bethesda and the Sanhedrin. And the reading is based on chapter, John chapter 5, 
And we have read from verse 1 to verse 15. All right, then. Okay. Let's read the first two paragraphs, and then we can open for the comments. Before we do that, let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you once again for, for uh, this chapter we demonstrates to us your love and how you came to, to bless us, how you came to heal us to show that it was never your intention that anyone should be sick. But we see here your son Jesus sympathizing with our infirmities. May he sympathize with each and every one of us today who may be suffering from some kind of infirmity. Thank you for your love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. Having five porches in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind halt without waiting for the moving of the water. At certain seasons, the water of this pool were agitated, and it was commonly believed that this was the result of supernatural power, and that whosoever first, after the troubling of the pool, stepped into the waters, would be healed of whatever disease he had. Hundreds of sufferers visited the place, but so great was the crowd when the water was troubled, that they rushed forward, trampling underfoot men, women and children, weaker than themselves. Many could not get near the pool. Many who had succeeded in reaching it died upon its brink. Shelters had been erected about the place that the sick might be protected from the heat by day and the chilliness of the night. There were some who spent the night in these porches, creeping to the edge of the pool day after day in the vain hope of relief. We'll stop there. Anyone can put their hand up and comment about this reading this man who had been sick for 38 years who has been in such a state that is hard 38 years and he was still looking to get himself in the water which was believed to have supernatural healing it had supernatural power. This pool uh, reminds me of many places where the Roman Catholic have, you know, they have this Mary uh, believing that there is water at the bottom of the statue of Mary and many people go far away to these places where Mary's statues are planted, uh, erected to go and receive a healing. Many people believe these things up to this day, especially now it's increased how sad it is that people should, um, should think that God is so far away from them when he is just with them. When he's just a prayer away, Jesus is just a prayer away. And we thank God for the truth because you and I, we know not to go to these places. There is no supernatural power in any of these places. Anyone? Uh, anyone? Uh, any thoughts? Ali, Linda, please go ahead. Yes, good morning. It seemed to be survival of the fittest because it said they trampled other people who were who was iller than them, and um, you know some of them died, uh, you know, as a result of it. And um, you know, it was just a, it was um, we're not, you know, it's it was like superstition, you know, all these um, 
things where they go to Lourdes, as it was said, you know, and all kinds of things uh, for healing. There's only one person can heal, and that's God, you know, Jesus. And um, it's sad that people get these ideas. You know, there was a, yes. a, it's hundreds of sufferers visited the place. It's a great crowd of when the water was troubled, they rushed forward, trampling underfoot, men and women and children weaker than themselves. So it was survival of the fittest. And we're not actually told if anybody was healed, it was just superstitious. It's quite, uh, as, you, as you are speaking there, I'm just thinking how, how strange it is that men believe superstition more than they believe the word of God. Men will mock the word of God and they will reject the gospel and then they will reach out to things that have got no meaning whatsoever. When I'm in Glasgow, I see these uh, Buddhist men wearing long dresses and they got these little beads and they try to, you know, to talk to people to give it to them because they believe there is some blessings by saying the beads, receiving the beads from a monk. What a lie. You know, Satan is such a liar. And people will, I see people stopping and receiving them and giving some money to the monk. And I'm thinking, but when I'm standing there giving out books, they would rather receive the little beads from um, a, a, a monk than receive the truth of Jesus. How very sad. How easily men are deceived. Sister Kezia, please go ahead. Thank you for those thoughts, Sister Aline and Linda. Yes, thank you, Sister Dorothy, and good morning, everyone on the platform. Yes, uh, this story, we see again the Savior coming to um, save people from superstitious um, beliefs. Um, if this pool was really, you know, what the what they believed, uh, Jesus would have not come here. But we see here uh, the significance of um, coming to really say these things are not going to save you. These superstitious things are not save are not save you. And also, um, the man who was lying there, we are told he had been there for thirty eight years. Is I and before I never used to think. Um, 38 years, 38 years, what what was the significance of this 38 years? But fortunately, uh, I think uh, I listened to one of the uh, studies by Professor Feltz, Feltz, and he explained this 38 years. And um, you remember when the children of Israel they traveled for two years and they were on the blinks of getting into, into Canaan. That is when they came, they sent the spies to go and spy. And uh, they sent 12 spies, right? And when the, they came back, two of them, two of them um, gave the, uh, the good report, Caleb and, uh, jo and Joshua and the rest and the children of Israel mourned and complained and they were scared of these people, the I'm in my kings and so forth. And God tell them, told them to go back. And they wandered for a further 38 years to make it 40 years. This man was had this infirmity just like the Israelites for 38 years he was there this belief system of wandering and wandering around this pool for 38 years this man has been there long lying there and Christ comes in after 38 years to heal him at this pool therefore we can see that when we believe in these things you know we will take a long time to get out of those uh, belief systems which we think and when we don't believe in God, when we don't believe what God has, 
is it's shown us it will take us a long time we will wander in the wilderness for a very long time with illness with whatever because we have not believed what god is you know is is capable of doing in our lives what god wants us to do in our lives we will wander for a very very long time thank you so much thank you so much sister kezia for that insight uh, that study uh, you did from professor walter vibe that is so uh, powerful if you have the video or where you were reading from uh, you can share it uh, with us on prayer retreat and as you were speaking there i just thought in a spiritual sense many people who uh, hear the truth about the remnant and they want to join the remnant uh, the seventh day adventists they will they will come but they will still carry their old beliefs and they will struggle and hold on to them because they were so much attached to those false beliefs and false teachings they will cling to them still hold on to them some find it difficult to learn and unlearn some were speaking in tongues and they want to continue speaking in tongues where there is no benefit and it's not even biblical so when god brings us out of that darkness into his marvelous light he shows us the truth we should be willing to unlearn all those things because he wants to set us free we shouldn't allow ourselves to be uh, uh to be um burdened by carry that heavy load when jesus christ has given us so much light thank you for that uh alin and linda yeah please go ahead is that a new hand or an old hand yes it's uh, good morning <laughs> yes um, and um, and they, uh, they sell lucky charm bracelets and you buy these charms to put on your bracelet, you know, to have good look and all that. And then there's the cross and chain, which is um, it's a crucifix, you know, it, it's, um, it's, it's jewellery and, uh, you know, it's, um, it shouldn't be worn. Mm -hmm. There's the holy water. And the, yeah, there was a, 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 about the, this holy water, there was this campaign going on, if, I think it was in America and... Um, they were selling holy water to make money and somebody saw them with a tanker filling it up from the garage petrol uh, station. at the petrol station uh this holy water and, the, and um I mean, it wasn't holy at all you know it's just a money making racket but when these things happen nobody says anything about it you know it's not right mm. exactly it's not right you see um men uh men identify people's need you know sickness is something that drives people to want to go to extreme anything anything for healing and people know that people are desperate to be healed and these deceivers will come up with all kinds of ideas and draw men to desperately do anything even pay a lot of money you know, for these healings. It is not true. Satan is a liar. And you see in some um, countries where their traditional um, religionists, they, they put a little thing like a charm around the necks of their babies and hands or legs. I'm sure most of you must have seen that. How they are doing is they are just tying these things, evil spirits, into the minds of the babies. It is so scary when you think about it. And this is so common, especially among my tribe. My tribe are so are superstitious and they do things like that. And up to this day, they still cling to them, even when they still go to church. Yeah, Sister Kezia, please go ahead. Yes, I also wanted to um comment about um the the spirit around the the pool. You can see that these people they didn't have 
the spirit of God. If this was really an, an angel who was coming to do this uh, kind of work, how can you be trembling against each other? Or you can leave somebody for 38 years lying there. If you contrast this type of healing which they were claiming, which they believed, in contrast to the healing which, you know, um, we know that when people were coming to Paul, they would even bring their handkerchiefs and touch him so that the power which he had would, you know, that handkerchief would heal, you know, those people. The, the spirit here, it was a spirit of selfishness. Whoever comes in first, already you can see that is not the, the kind of healing God wants from us. Whoever comes first. It doesn't matter whether, you know, there's an old woman behind me. As long as I get first, the kingdom of heaven is for all. It's not for just a few. It's not for the one who are stronger physically. The kingdom of heaven is for everyone, whether you are lame, whether you are what, you are all accepted in, in God's kingdom. We are all accepted in God's healing, not the one who is done who, who will come first and and get this water uh, and get the, the the powers of this water because you are physically stronger than the other one. You can already see that they, this belief system was a very wrong belief system. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Kezia. Yes, you are right. And uh, thank you for those thoughts about these beliefs which was it's so it's so sad when you when you just create a picture in your mind you can see this place was a place where people were sick and to to even make the matters worse shelters had been erected about the place you know so that the sick might be protected from the heat by day and the chilling chilliness of the night just waiting there to go inside the water to be healed. How merciful our God is. We don't need to do any of these things. We do not need to travel for somebody to pray for us or to heal us. All we need to do is just send a prayer. Jesus is only a prayer away. There's a song that talks about Jesus being only a prayer away. So we want to thank God for the privilege of having such a compassionate, loving Savior whom we can call upon his name and who can deliver us from our diseases. And even if he doesn't deliver us from our diseases now, we know that we are healed. He, you know, there will be no sorrow there. There will be no uh, sickness. They shall never say, I'm sick in my mountain. So if you are sick amongst us here and you've got terminal illnesses, just remember that scripture. Jesus said, they shall never say, I am sick. And, you know, let us just keep on pressing up the upward way, knowing that Jesus comes and everything is made new. And you give us mortal bodies where we will never have to go to see any physician because we have been healed. Yeah, we will eat those leaves which are for the healing of the nations and we will never be sick. Let us take courage. All right. Uh, Sister Judy. Yes, please. Go ahead. Hi. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Sister Judy. Yeah, uh, this actually passage is really teaching me what I'm gaining from that is we really need to trust God you know, we might be seeking so many things. Okay, these people were believing that going to this pool, they will receive healing. And if we reflect back three years ago, we believe so much. Some of us believed so much in science. And the world, as we see now, they seem to believe more in science and they don't believe in God. We are thinking the science is the one who's got the answers for our uh, our diseases. But no, 
All we need is to really trust God. Yes, there is a place where we need to seek the physician. But so many things. Even when we seek the physicians, we need to be asking God to even use those physicians, but not to put our trust in men. We have to be mm. trusting God, not trusting men. Amen. Wonderful. That's so powerful, Sister Judy. Thank you for bringing that up. It is true. You know, men, uh, we know they are not going to tell us how not to be sick. Like our God tells us to eat right, to go back to Eden and eat plant-based diet and avoid diseases, these cancer, cancerous foods and all of these things. They will never tell us they are the doctors are not, uh, they are not trained in nutrition. They just do guesswork uh, and they are not even well educated in those areas. You see how Satan doesn't care, uh, doesn't care about you and me. We are sick, but we thank God for God is always, always true. Um he teaches us how to eat well that we may be in good health. And we are so privileged to have the eight laws of health. May God help us so that we do not put our trust so much in man. Thank you for that. Arlene and Linda, did you want to say something? Oh. Yes, I was, I was listening to a sermon years ago. I remember it was a, it was a Pentecostal uh man who'd, who'd become an Adventist and was telling us telling us uh, about the deceptions that go off in these healing meetings. He says um, they bring a woman in with a goiter, but it's like a big swelling on the neck. And um, and the, the, the evangelist will have a pin in his hand and in a shout, be thou healed, and the drum roll will go and he'll, he'll tap the, the, the goiter with a pin in his hand because it's a balloon. And, and it would burst, and they weren't near the burst because of all the drum rolls and, you know, everything. And she's healed, you see, straight away. And also there's um, She uh, has a high neck, so they can't see the High neck, so they can't see. It's just a big lump on the neck, you know, these goiters. And that's what they did. And um, and also, um, he, he, was a, he was a very bad, bad eyesight, and he wore glasses. Anyway, anyway, the... Um, uh, they, 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 they healed him as, as, was, as was thought and, and, and they said you know and he could see he could see well but the next morning he was back to normal couldn't see anything and he said it's hypnotism hypnosis mm -hmm. they threw the glasses away they threw the glasses away so they had to go and buy a new pair and he also said that if, if they didn't get enough money on the line used to hang the money peg the money on the line the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. wouldn't come down that night and it was so deception. It was the same one that said about the water going to the um, uh, going to yeah. the house to get the holy water. Mm. And uh, you know, it was just just a lot of deception. But people don't talk about it. They don't say anything in the church about it. Mm. It's amazing. Mm. Mm. How very sad. How very sad. It's not true, and it's just the same as his televangelists who have got these healing powers. They think that they can heal. And people go there because they have identified the needs and it's all money-making um, tactic to uh, give people false hope. Do these people not have a heart? Why do you want to give people false hope of healing? They come there in their wheelchairs and in their terrible uh, diseases, chronic diseases, and they are lying to them that they can, they can be healed. And it is not true. Thank you for that. Uh, yes, uh, Sister Aline is saying, every country has superstitious rituals. You're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, and the supernatural power was an unclean spirit. So it was. All these unclean spirits, all these manifestations, they are increasing as we see the soon return of Jesus Christ. Satan has placed a counterfeit everywhere. And it's like a virus now. It's been unleashed and you're seeing all these uh, fake miracles and all, not only miracles, other things. I don't even watch them anymore. These uh, televangelists who claim to have power. 
And people can see this minister cannot be a minister of God, but they still flock to them. It's like people love, um, it's like people love lies more than the truth. It's like people trust men more than they do God. It's, it's very saddening. Yeah, okay. All right, let me see. Anyone else? Sister, uh, Sister Kezia. As, oh, let's say, Sister Aline, please go ahead and then Sister Kezia. Good morning. Um, morning, everyone. There Good is morning. a thing called the placebo effect. Yeah, um, the placebo effect is um, that you believe that you're healed. The doctor is doing something to you and he's probably not doing anything. But because you believe so hard, yeah, you believe that you are healed. And a lot of people, um, even sometimes I think that some things that happen is a placebo effect because um, you're taking something and you believe that it happens. It is it, making you better. Now, these people who is going to these um, places to 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 be healed, there's nothing stirring the water. There's nothing. An angel don't step in the water to to make everyone trample on the on the feet and and do things like this. That is not of God. Yeah, but men will make you stumble. Men will put things in, in place to make you stumble. The Sanhedrin and, and Pharisees and all those people will make you stumble because they want to make everyone believe that they can do all these things. Like Sister Judith says, science. You know, people do believe in science. And it, they will always believe in science rather than the truth, rather than the word of God. You know, um, they... They have superstitious beliefs and they will believe in man than our creator. The creator they think that is 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 no one. It's 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 who you believe. <clears throat> and a lot of people will die because of their superstitious belief. And mm. men will make them and tell them that this is right when they know that it's wrong, but because it's, as you say, a money-making scheme and, you know, you know that this is not healing, but they will put it in a bottle so you can buy it. And while you, when you go and buy these things, you believe that you are healed. So it's a placebo effect. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Aline, for, for, for those uh, thoughts. Um, uh, Sister Kezia, please go ahead. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Um, so is that an old hand or okay? No, no, it's 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 another hand. I was just going to yes, say okay. the same. Okay. What? That's sister, fine. Yeah, I was going to say the same things which uh, Sister um, um Adin has just said that a, a lot of times it's the placebo effect as well, but also we should also remember. Um, I think it's it's in the great controversy. I can't remember the page that, especially the times which we are approaching now, Satan will bring a lot of diseases and 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 heal those diseases, uh, and and so that people will believe in the miracles. Therefore, we we should not our faith should not be based on miracles, because uh, he has been given those powers those um, unclean spirits will be doing all sorts of miracles in our face. People healed, people whatever, but what spirit is being is, 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 is the one which is working. Therefore we need to be careful not to be to be lewd because of the of 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 these miracles. We have got to 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 see and and test whether these miracles, the, pe the people who are performing these miracles are actually, you know, have got the spirit of God or the spirit of of Satan. They are possessed with the sp spirit of Satan. In great controversy, it actually says, the, you will bring these diseases. We know that all these COVID diseases have been um, manufactured in a lab, 
you know, and, and it's not a secret anymore. He will bring all these diseases and tint the air, but, you know, and claim healing, you know, for, for, for the world. You, yet they are the ones who have brought those uh, diseases in the first place. So as we approach the end of, of times, we have to be careful that, you know, um, we are not led. We have to test the spirits. You know, we are told to test the spirit before we can believe what, what these things are doing. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, test the spirit and see if they are of God. Thank you so much, Sister Kezia, for that. And as you are talking there, it says there, many who had succeeded in reaching it died upon its brink. Can you imagine this angel was stirring this water? Is he is only limited to the to the pool, to the porch, to this water. And you see, men, people are they buy into lies so quickly of the devil more than they they uh, believe the word of God. Because if, when they saw these people dying here, people waiting, this angel is this angel stirring the water. Surely he could have at least reached the people on the edge or even himself brought the people in the water themselves and say, look, you, you have been here for 38 years and, um, uh, you know, you are in front of the queue. There was nothing like that. With Jesus, there were no queues. There was none of them. Multitude flocked to him and scripture tells us they were all healed. People did not kill to be healed by Jesus. Jesus Christ is the great physician, the great the one who only says the word and you and I can be healed. Praise God for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Uh, I cannot see any further hands. And if we can continue with the reading, can I ask Alina and Linda? Yes, did you want to say something? Yeah, yeah just, just, just quickly. Um, yeah, we went to the travel clinic to try and get some um, malarone because we're going to Kenya. Not, okay. not Kenya, Ghana. Ghana. And, uh, but, yes, that's anti anti and, and it tablets. turned out they couldn't give us any because uh, they don't do it. And they was offering us vaccine after vaccine. They offered us the triple vaccine, mumps, rubella, and everything. We said we'd have those as children. And then they wanted va they wanted the, the um, uh, tetanus vaccine, and then they wanted us to have the um, uh, hepatitis B vaccine, and they wanted to have it all together. And the flu, and, and the, the flu, flu vaccine, and the COVID vaccine, and the COVID vaccine. We'd go out there dead. Yeah. I mean, uh, have just... it all together. All together, yeah. And um... <laughs> and uh, we, they said, "Sorry, we can't do anything for you." They said, "It's all, but it's um." We, we, we just we just went. We just um. We said, "No, we don't want none of it." Mm. What we went for, they couldn't give us, and they they didn't even tell us they couldn't. It was just a waste of time. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's all so many It's about six vaccines they wanted us to have. In one go, and, and, the, the, and the, one, no... the one that's only required really is the yellow fever one, which we had an exemption, exemption for. Of age. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you for sharing that. I was going to be quite a few of them on, on at one go. <laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing that. And uh, Sister Alina's food, Proverbs 27 21 the crucible is for silver, and the furnace is for gold. And a man is tested by his praise. Thank you for sharing that, Sister um, Aline. All right, then. Okay, shall we? I can't see any more hands. Shall we continue with the reading? Can someone volunteer to read, um, starting from the paragraph which says, Jesus was again at Jerusalem. The next two paragraphs, please. Jesus was again at Jerusalem, walking alone in apparent uh, meditation and prayer. He came to the pool. He saw the wretched sufferers watching for that which they supposed to be their only chance of cure. He longed to exercise his healing power and make every sufferer whole whole. But it was the Sabbath day. Multitudes were going to the temple for worship. And he knew that such an act of healing 
would so excite the prejudice of the Jews as to cut short his work. But the savior saw one case of supreme wretchedness. It was that of a man who had been a helpless cripple for 38 years. His disease was in a great degree the result of his own sin and was looked upon as a judgment from God. Alone and friendless, feeling that he was shut out from God's mercy, the sufferer had passed long years of misery. At the time when it was expected that the waters would be troubled, those who pitied his helplessness would bear him to the porches. But at the favored moment, he had no one to help him in. He had seen the rippling of the water, but he had never been able to get further than the edge of the pool. Others stronger than he would plunge in before him. He could not contend successfully with the selfish, scrambling crowd. His persistent effort towards the one object and his anxiety and continual disappointment were fast wearing away the remnant of his strength. Thank you very much, Sister Judith, for the beautiful reading. Yes, we see here, <laughs> Jesus can see this man that he had been there for that long. You see, Jesus didn't ask this man, how long have you been here? Jesus knew that he had been there or that he, he had been in that condition for 38 years, and he pitied him. You know, he, he, uh, he says that it was that of a man who had been a helpless cripple for 38 years. So Jesus' eyes, they see the need of you and I in a different way. Each and every one of us is special to Jesus. But Jesus is so merciful that he knows the depth of your sorrow and suffering. So he singled this man out that his name may be glorified. And we are told there he didn't want to stir the prejudice of the, of the people because it was on the Sabbath. But Nevertheless, he had, Jesus had to do something for this man. <clears throat> he was so lonely. Can you imagine how lonely and friendless this man was? And we are told that it was because of his sin, the sickness had come to him. And look at the way Jesus looks at, at us. You know, um, this story needs to... Uh, this story has to help us start looking at people differently. Some people in our churches, if we can come closer home, they look at someone who had lived a life of sin as though no faith can be uh, bestowed upon him or her because of their sinful life. But look at the contrast, how Jesus looked at this man and how he pitied him. He, had, he, he came and healed him. He healed him. That's who God is, compassionate. And may God give us the eyes of Jesus that we may see things the way God sees things. Sometimes we are so far away, our thoughts and our imaginations are so far away from God. So far away from God. There was one man in my previous church before, uh, he had cancer. And one of the sisters who, uh, sisters asked him, we would go and see him in hospital. The cancer would eat him up almost like his bones. But he was materially blessed. And then he would recover. Jesus would give him some healing. And then after that, you run back to his business and even do his business on the Sabbath. And then when he's sick, then people would pray for him. You get healed. 
and then you would keep on running back and forward. And still you'd come out and not fear God. You see, sometimes we bring these diseases on ourselves because of our disobedience. Mm -hmm. But what I was trying to say is that this sister says to him, you, why have you not been healed? We have been praying for you. And you still are not healed. Why is that? What are you doing? What sins are you doing? <laughs> well, you could say the sister may have known this man was continuing in sin, but it is not our place to ask people those questions. Do you think it is our place? Let me hear your comments on that. I believe it is not my place to... Uh, to conclude that somebody is going through a hard time because of their sin. I leave that to God. I do not know his heart. I do not know why this man did his business on the Sabbath. I don't know the rest of his life, what kind of life he led. But what I do know is that my business is to pray for somebody and not to, uh, not to uh, tell them, ask them what sins that they have committed. Well, I can, we can help each other by advising one another to eat a healthy diet. That is help. But when it comes to sin, it's not our place. Sister Kezia, please go ahead. Oh, okay. Is that an old hand? Then I take it. Any comments on those two paragraphs? Sorry, it's not an old hand. Sorry. Sorry. I just wanted to comment on the top paragraph where Jesus um, is saying here, um, multitudes were going to the temple for worship. He knew such an act of healing will, ex will, will uh, excite the prejudice of the Jews and cut his work short. Jesus mm -hmm. wanted to heal everybody at this pool. He was mm -hmm. sympathizing with them. And, mm -hmm. and we are told here that by doing that, that would um, jeopardize his his cut his work short. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm what I'm getting from here is sometimes you know when we you know we we put sickness sometimes before salvation. Um, our temporary needs. Yes, sickness is something where you are suffering, but we should always know that. Uh, sickness is only temporary. Here, Jesus did not want to heal people, all of them, because he had greater work of salvation before him, which he needed to do, rather than jeopardize that. Therefore, we should we should not regard sickness as the, oh, is, you know, if I'm not healed, if I'm not, what is more important is sickness of our uh, spiritual sickness. That's what we should be agonizing to get healing for. Because a uh, sickness of the body, uh, it's only temporary here. Uh, yes, you can be relieved of sickness, right? Of this uh, suffering, but it's, it's not going to help us if we are going to be lost in the end. Therefore, we should strive for more of healing, of the spiritual healing and, you know, the kingdom of God, rather than to strive to say, I will, I will do everything to get, you know, to get well. Um, we, we should be looking more at the spiritual healing than uh, physical healing. This is what Christ is doing here. He looked more at the spiritual healing of people, salvation of the people than temporary relief of their sickness. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Kezia, for that. And we will see that as we study further down, we will see exactly that this healing was also Jesus wanted to heal him physically and heal him spiritually because he was there. He was in this condition because of his own sin. And we see Jesus, what Jesus says to him after healing. And I love where it says there, Jesus, you know, so he could have healed everyone, but he did not want his their prejudice to 
cause him for his work to be uh, cut short. So here we can see Jesus' wisdom. He knew these people. He knew that there was going to be a, a commotion when he he heals on the Sabbath so many people. And he, he, he withheld his uh, blessings to everyone because he had a work to do and they were going to just cause problems for him. And shall we not also learn to use wisdom? You know, it's good to serve God, but there are times that we need to discern things and look around what is happening around us. There are certain things that you may say to people, if you are speaking to people, and you may cut the work short yourself. Some people, they are filled with evil spirits and they hate the gospel. Satan causes them to despise, you know? And people will say hurtful things to you. You don't need to say anything because that, that those people can cut that work short. You can be standing there. If somebody comes and tells you to move, you know? I have been told to move where I'm set up many times. And I have this, I, I'm thinking, I've got the right to stand here. I came here first. But you know, move. I've been told, move. This is where I stand. I, I I come, you know, this is my spot. I sing here, or this is my begging spot. I don't know whether some of you have come across that. And when I see that aggression, I just move. I just move. Because I don't want my spirit to be stirred by these people trying to cause problems for me. And we need to be like Jesus. We need to be discerning, pray for discernment because many a times I have entered into God's work without discerning, praying for discernment, and I had wished I had done things differently. Okay? I, yeah, I think today we shall uh, stop there. Uh, let me come back and see. So today, sister, uh, there's someone, a uh, prayer retreat, and then Sister Arlene, and then we will close for today. Uh, and good continue. morning, good morning, Saints and Sister Sharon. You know, it's interesting to see that often when we look at healing, that we 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 look at the physical manifestation of healing. If we see the person walking, if we see them in health, we believe that they are healed. But when we notice when Jesus heals people generally he would say to them their sins are forgiven mm -hmm. why do you believe that he was not concerned about the physical and more about the mental and the spiritual you see the case is you can heal someone physically but if they still have that negative mindset they will constantly bring their bodies back into the position of negativity and negativity and the lack of the guidance of the spirit causes diseases we know as seven day adventists that disease starts in the mind so when christ brought healing to those people that he touched or spoke to it was to change their mindset that they would be at peace and you know Isaiah speaks about what was the Messiah to do he was come he came to set the captive free and to set them at liberty to give them freedom from that condemnation that sin brings to them or the condemnation of holding on to a stronghold that they've had for years you know you know, either sexual perversion or um, when I say self-esteem, I'm, I'm meaning that they have given themselves such a negative mindset that they have caused themselves to be reduced to a diseased person or 
they have got in the way of their life that they haven't progressed. So it's important that when we pray for people, we also pray for their spirituality. You know, the mm -hmm. word SOS talks about save our souls. If there is no point saving ungodly sinners when we need God to save their souls. So it mm -hmm. is definitely um, spiritual healing is about saving the soul of a person with the kingdom and if the physical being if God chooses to heal the physical being that is an extra blessing um, it's all about saving souls thank you amen amen thank you very much for that insight sister uh, sister um, sister Sharon yes indeed indeed Christ is more interested in saving the soul because the body, the same body that has been healed can fall sick again. So it was temporal, but we know that we shall receive total healing when Christ shall come. Thank you very, very much for that. And we shall come to an end of the study this morning. Thank you everyone for coming and let us uh, uh, pray to close. And I would like to ask uh, Sister Sarah to pray to close for us, please. Are you able to pray, Sister Sarah? Okay, I cannot hear Sister Sarah, but I can ask. Sister Elizabeth, are you able to pray to close for us? Okay, okay. Um, they probably are not in a position to, to pray. Uh, Sister Phoebe. Yes. Could you pray to close for us, please? Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bearing us since we came this morning to the throne of grace, to receive the food of life this morning. As we've been fed, let this word be written in our heart, in our mind, that we leave this day as we're going to do our duty in different places. Go with us. Give us strength of rejoicing that the God we serve is, has been with us since morning up to the time we go through the day. May you give us, Lord Father, the grace of the strength of boldness to witness for you in everything what we do. May you teach us to be faithful, that we don't take our eyes on you, that you lead us to know that, Lord, Father, you are God who heal all diseases which are troubling us, the sickness of the flesh, the mind, and the soul, that, Father, we be able to walk in your presence in everything we do to know that, God, we serve a living God who's even given us a privilege to be his disciples. Help us, each one of us, Father, and our family, protect us from harm and danger, and give us a grace, Lord Father, of meditating on your word, which we learned today, that we cannot be, forget what we learn, that there is only one God who heals, but not the things which root in other people, in other things, but to learn that God is the one who heals the flesh, the mind, and the soul. Thank you, Lord Father, for the blessing of your Holy Spirit, which will be with us today, that we'll be able to be strengthened to increase our faith, and also to prepare for the blessing which we learned today, that we're going to be able to be in the season where there will be no sickness, but from one Sabbath to a Sabbath and one moon to noon, that we worship and rejoice to our Lord. Thank you for your, your, your lady servant who has been leading us to study. May you bless and bless our family. May you continue, Lord Father, to bless the ministry he is doing and others as all of us work together for one purpose, for bringing so to the kingdom to come. 
Thank you, Father, for forgiving all our sins. And thank you for the blessing you have continued to give us. May you be with us, Lord Father, and strengthen us and protect us. We thank you for all these things. Through the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you very much, Sister Phoebe, for, for that beautiful prayer. And um, yeah, well, thank you everyone for your contributions and for um, for coming to study. So let us uh, uh, let us uh, meet again tomorrow morning and continue in the study. If you have time to study further and be ready to bring in more rich contributions, please do so. Okay, thank you so much, and um, uh, I will uh, hand over to Sister Aline and Linda for further announcements. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Dorothy, for leading this morning, and thank you for the prayer, Sister Baby. Um, at 12 o'clock, it will be midday prayer. 6.30, it will be the song service. And 7 o'clock, it will be a, a, a message from Elder Pearson Demiris this evening. So have a nice day, everyone. See you all later, by God's grace. Amen. Thank you.